Welcome back. This is Nyagawani with me, Ibrahim Sani, along with my colleague Najib Aro. We're starting off with some of the ideas on GST as well as the Fiscal Responsibility Act. Very recently, the Finance Minister, Tengku Datuk Sri Zaful Aziz, did say that the Fiscal Responsibility Act will be tabled in the next parliamentary session, scheduled between 18th of July until 4th of August this year. The Act is said to be broadening the tax base and improve tax compliance, which is considered as political firecracker items. Still, when it comes to the Malaysia's fiscal discussions, the reintroduction of the GST is always on the table. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri noted his support in recent weeks on the reintroduction of the GST, admitting its unpopularity but saying that there are limited fiscal options made available. Here to unpack all of this is Welin Wiranto, economist at OCBC Bank, joining us live in Singapore. Uh, well, let's talk a little bit more about the reality of the government reintroducing GST in the near term. We know for a fact that this is never going to be easy. Do you think that this is a reality for us in the near term? Morning. First of all, thanks for having me on board. Well, I think the parameters for GST reintroduction will probably be tabled together with the Fiscal Responsibility Act um, next week. I think we'll probably hear a lot more discussions about it. Uh, now, in terms of exact timeline of when uh, it will be reintroduced, probably going to take a while, at least a year. Uh, I think, first of all, uh, there's obviously, as you alluded to, there's political consideration. Uh, GE is not due until next year. Uh, so but there's always a likelihood of it being called earlier, including this year. And I think no politician would want to uh, talk about GST nonstop in their campaign trails and becoming a hot political potato issue. So any prospect of that being reintroduced this year probably be fairly minimal. Uh, despite the fact that you know the need for uh, GST to help to diversify fiscal revenue is very very real. Uh, William Najib here. What would be some of the policy implications involved uh, in this? Hi, Najib. Well, I think the, the first of all, why they're bringing it back, obviously because of the fiscal revenue diversification need that I alluded to earlier. Uh, you know, Malaysia is still very very dependent on petroleum revenue, uh, on petro uh, and patronage for royalty, for taxes, and obviously also for dividends. That is all well and good when oil price is high like now. Uh, but if you recall, even two years ago, we talked about WTI dipping to negative territory. So, uh, oil is a is a is a good friend, but it can only turn on you. It can also turn on you very very quickly, uh, without any warning. And to have a country's uh, fiscal revenue very very much tied to the oil price itself, I think that is not wise, especially given the whole energy transition. Uh, potentially going to see a, a sunset uh, industry being in the oil and gas industry, maybe not. Now, not five years from now, uh, 10, 15 years from now, it will be, be, be in the pipeline. So having that broader base is, is very important. And, and obviously, this occurs uh, against the backdrop of how subsidy bills are ballooning. Uh, Prime Minister himself talked about how uh, because of the higher needs for food and energy subsidies, um, you know, a balloon to, to the tune of 30 billion ringgit uh, that is unexpected in terms of the, of the expenditure. So something has to come in uh, to help to plug the gap. Um, well, and let's focus a little bit more on the Fiscal Responsibility Act. Um, we have seen this uh, act being uh, introduced, not introduced, mooted uh, by the government in previous budget announcements. Uh, we are expecting some ideas on, say, for instance, for instance, the debt ceiling being raised. We are also expecting some other notions of uh, other fiscal um, actions being put in place in this act. Um, based on your view, what would be some of the key ideas that you can share with us when it comes to the Fiscal Responsibility Act that is going to be tabled uh, very soon? Yeah, to be honest, very little details are being released. I think uh, we, we know some of the key parameters, as you mentioned, that ceiling being raised is probably quite likely, given the space that uh, Malaysia's government does need in order to, again, uh, come out from the pandemic. And uh, we're still living through some of the impact. And obviously, having more space to deal with a potential downturn in the economy, uh, that would be also be, be, be one of the key reasons why we see that limit being raised. But beyond that, I mean, they, they spoke about how uh, they come up with ways to try to tax the grey economy more. They want to broaden the tax base. You know, recall that you know tax to GDP ratio for Malaysia is actually one of the lowest in the region. Meaning, you know, uh, we, we need we, again. It goes back to the need to diversify uh, fiscal revenue. It goes back to the need to have a broad tax base in order to be able to have the wire vitals uh, to to come up with stimulus. Say, if the need for economic uh, stimulus uh, because of any downturn uh, comes up again, there's obviously. Uh, been something we had to deal with, uh, unfortunately, over the last uh, two years, quite a lot. 
uh, many, many uh, different kind of packages having to roll out. Uh, but, you know, again, the fiscal space we realize for Malaysia is very limited, uh, which is why they have to lean on EPF withdrawal, uh, they have to lean on all, all these mechanisms that are outside of the fiscal territory per se. Uh, so, William, what is the uh, basically impact on the economic growth and also business-related issues uh, in the Fiscal Responsibility Act and also on the G GST implementation? Well, in terms of the economic growth outlook, we look at Malaysia quite favorably. Uh, we, look, we see Malaysia growing at 5.7 percent this year. But as I mentioned earlier, headwinds are there. I mean, some notable watcher talk about hurricane, right? Whether there's hurricane happening or not, the weather doesn't look too good. We see dark clouds because of China slowdown, because of potential for U.S. recession. So, so having that GST introduction uh, coming through the pipeline, they obviously you add a bit of burden, uh, especially because household consumption, yes, it's been recovering quite quite healthily, uh, but at the same time, obviously, this will come under threat should the GST uh, get reintroduced without too much warning. So all these are very, very fine balance. Uh, the government, unfortunately, has to strike. Uh, there's no such thing as a free lunch. If you want revenues to go up, to find it from somewhere. And unfortunately, I think GST will have to feature quite a bit in that uh, calculation. You know, I, I just got to ask you a little bit more about markets. Um, the U.S. Treasury yield saw a big jump uh, in recent days, uh, perhaps on the notion that the Fed might raise interest rates even further um, around the world as well. Um, central banks are not done yet um, with moving up the interest rates, Malaysia included. Um, also, inflation rates are creeping up rather steadily across the globe. Uh, Malaysia in particular, food inflation is actually quite impacting uh, the consumer uh, price index. Do you feel that all this is not necessarily a bad thing or you know basically we're entering a recession and very very soon and therefore all of us need to sit tight and do what's necessary I don't know whether it's a good or bad thing. It's something that is happening. I think it's very much, uh, very little that, that we can do to control that. Obviously, global situation where effectively in economic parlance, we call it price taker. We have to take what the Fed does, we have to take what the US Treasury yields do. Uh, so there's so much we can do from the Asian side, from the Malaysian side. But I think one thing that Malaysia has done right, obviously, is to start to normalize the policy rate, right? We know Bank Negara has already hiked the policy rate by 25 basis points. There will probably more to come this year and next year. Uh, just because, again, uh, even though on the relative basis, uh, Malaysia's inflation is not that bad. I know I, whenever I mention that, my, my Malaysian friends are not happy. They say, you're not the one buying chicken, you're not the one buying eggs and cooking all in the we're, supermarket. With we're rolling our eyes and, here too, uh, Wellian. We are rolling our eyes too here when you say that. But, but seriously, what, um, um, very quickly, do you feel that that uh, this is something that is in the short term shock or do you feel that this is going to prolong for quite some time? I think in terms of inflation shock, probably be with us for a while. Uh, I think we, we were gone with the whole transitory inflation. I think that's more hope that analysis. Uh, and at this time, I think hopefully we will get some, uh, you know, demand slowdown in the U.S. Not enough to cause a recession because they cause another whole set of headache. But again, uh, in, it's a very, very fine balance. And, and like Janet Yellen said herself, uh, we need both skill and luck to avoid a recession. Thank you very much. That was Valian Wiranto, the economist at OCBC Bank.